I had no idea. You don't know what you don't know. There's a whole world of opportunities out there. Right. And sometimes we're guided to a very specific thing, and it's a good exercise to do both, to look at what's being prescribed to you and also look at the very big picture and see where your heart and head both match up about where you fit in and where you can go. Hey, Dr. Bill here. So this is going to be a really fun Meet the Mentor. Without further ado, I will introduce you to John Vitale. He is a music chief and co-founder of Focus at Will. And I'll explain to you what Focus at Will is. Um, they basically create streaming music, which you can find at focusatwill.com, where they have streamlined music, which helps to decrease distractions, maintain productivity, and retain information while you're working, studying, writing, or reading. And this is all proven through neuroscience. So this isn't just like a random thing that they kind of invented. They literally went in, they took music, and you have different genres of music. You can have classical, or you can have rock, or you can have punk, or whatever it is you like to listen to. And they've literally tested this music and gone ahead and removed the things that commonly distract people while they're listening to music so that you can listen to music and be more productive. Did I get that right? Wow, that's one of the best intros ever. Thanks. All right. <laughs> John's background, though, is he's been for 30 years in the music business, um, sound, film production. He's been a supervisor, a producer, an engineer, a remixer. He's worked for Warner Brothers, Sony, uh, BMG, Universal Music, the B-52s, the Red Tot Chili Peppers, um, Filter, Eminem, Katie Lane, George Clinton, and the Romantics. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, John. Hi, everyone. Yeah. All right. How'd you start in the music business? Well, um, you know, at about age eight, I would hang out in my uncle's bedroom, and he had a guitar, and I could kind of play it. So my mom and dad were so sweet. They were like, why don't you take music lessons? So I was able to take music lessons very young, and I had a pretty good ear for it. So I love music, and I played from eight all the way to like high school or college, and then you know, I had the, uh, the college counselor say, well, you know, if you want to make money, you better get into the technical field. So you should go to school for electrical engineering because you have a good math background. So I thought, sure, let's do that. So I kind of put away the um, music side of things for a while. And in school, I studied electrical computer engineering. And I liked it, but I have to say that um, my internship in college was at uh, a car company at General Motors, which was great, but I found myself missing the arts and music. So I would hang out with my friends, we were still playing in bands, and um, I was recording music on a little four track, and I took the demos one day of one of my friend's bands to a recording studio, because they were gonna record some music, and the guy who owned the studio said, hey, you're really good at this, you should be a recording engineer, let me, let me hear more about what you did. And I realized that um, maybe there's an opportunity to take the technical and the arts and maybe blend them a little bit. So I started making records at this recording studio and uh, worked with local artists. And then a couple of producers that came through, I was assisting and they said, hey, why don't you come work for our production company? We worked for Warner Brothers and Sire and we worked with these artists. And it was a great way to work with major artists, um, kind of warming up, remixing, and then I began producing for the major labels as well. Wow. All right. So. I want to talk about Focus at Will, and then more kind of about the music industry. Um, how did you guys come up with this whole concept to start this company? So um, Will and I are both expats from the music industry. Will's a number one hit songwriter, um, amazing musician, and we become really good friends in the early 2000s. And the first time we met, we actually talked about music for different purposes, but we had no idea we'd make a, a, a business venture out of it later. So fast forward to 2009, and now the record industry is kind of in a, a bit of a crash. And there's a good story around this as well. It's like, well, what do you do? We're used to making hit records and making all this money. Also, the money is starting to evaporate from the music industry. What do you do? You reinvent yourself, which is really uncomfortable. So Will and I were having, you know, napkin sessions at his breakfast table. And, right. and we were actually gonna start another company that was very visual. It was much more around cameras and 3D visuals and, you know, sometimes if you ask the right question, it has a lot of destiny to it. So I'm just like you and I are sitting here now, like, well, have we figured out everything we could do with music before we completely put this behind us and go to Yeah, but like, 
I would never even think like, let's create music to help people work and study without being distracted. Like, where did that whole concept even come from? Ah, so it's good. So the iPad had not been invented yet. Right? Okay. This is like 2009. And we're reading some scientific, popular mechanics like, hey, here's what the iPad's gonna be. And we were just brainstorming, like, what could you do with that technology? And we thought, what if we were the first sound engine that when you put anything on a screen, contextual audio happens? So if you were gonna be in um, a travel book, you would hear indigenous music from the, com from the country that you're in. What right. if you're gonna read a fiction novel, a romance novel, he carries her over the threshold and you hear all the beautiful music. So we thought, oh, will be the sound engine that delivers a Hollywood soundtrack automatically to everybody through Apple's new device. That was big, hairy, audacious goal, but we actually thought about it for another week and thought, well, what the heck, let's try it. So we put together a little mini demo prototype that right. worked and we pitched it to a venture capitalist and within one week we had the first yes to go start it on the project. Now that of course morphed out of uh, contextual music to now what if you can make the music that helps people focus? Yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, when you sit down and you say, I'm going to create music to help you focus, what do you need to have in there and what do you need to have taken out of there to actually help that happen? Great question. So part of my job is I uh, hang out with the scientists about a half hour to an hour every day and go, you know, there's the Mozart theory, there's all these theories about music and the brain. Which ones really work according to your data points and your science? And right. you have to ask science scientists the right questions because they have a lot of info and they'll give you nuances. And they'll say, well, the data shows that this kind of sound and this kind of sound would help people who are super ADHD yeah. and be less distracted. So given an example we talked about earlier, for instance, you don't want, none of your music have, have, have vocals in it. Correct? Yes. yes. Because why? Well, perfect perfect example. So the scientists are like, well, the vocals will stimulate your um, language system in your brain. So right away you're bogging down the CPU whenever you hear vocals because your primal brain is going, wait a minute, is someone talking to me? Even though you know the song and you hear it over and over, your parts of your brain are still going, right. should I be answering this person? So it has to be instrumental music. Okay. Then there's certain nuances in the music. Let's say that there's things in the vocal range. Our primal brains are very, very sensitive to anything in the vocal range because that's how we survive and that's how we talk. So if you're playing piano in middle C in this high range, or you play down here, this is actually going to be better to play the music down here if you're trying to focus. Ah. So there's some tricks you do in compositions. There's some tricks you do then in the mastering process. And I would imagine that you guys put like tons of electrodes on people's heads while they're playing the music to see what the brain activity is and all that. Yes, we, uh, we organized a study here at UCLA with Dr. Sidoroff and we actually had the tinfoil hats on with the electrodes and we had hundreds of people listen to streamlined, videos, streamlined music versus regular music. And what we found is that certain nodes would be stimulated and show that they're higher in focus than other music that was distracted. You could see right in the EEG so cool. noise frequencies about who was being distracted exactly when, and we can match it up to what parts of the music we're doing. Now, if if you're a student sitting out here and you're watching this and you want to say, John, I love music and I want to get into the music business when I graduate college or, or graduate high school, what tips would you give somebody to kind of break into that very competitive industry? Uh, great question. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people in the music industry have a very zigzag path. And um, I'm glad that I had a technical background blended with the arts. I think it really helps a lot. I would say that I've had some people tell me that you can't do something and you really have to follow your heart. There was parts and decisions I made where I felt uncomfortable, like everyone's saying to do this, but my heart is telling me to do this. So I think that you have to um, understand, I, I would say looking back college here, here's the best way I could put it. I had no idea, you don't know what you don't know. There's a whole world of opportunities out there. Right. And sometimes we're guided to a very specific thing and it's a good exercise to do both, to look at what's being prescribed to you and also look at the very big picture and see where your heart and head both match up about where you fit in and where you could go. So for, for me, it was about understanding the beauty of the technical degree, but then understanding the nuances of music, and I got to connect all those up later. And had I listened to some other people, I might still be in a 
car plant um, designing um, engine parts. Yep, <laughs> true. So as, um, as Focus at Will grows, what are your goals for growth with your company? We actually discussed this with our team and uh, we're a Singularity University company, which is a fantastic organization. And the goal there is if you have an app, an idea, a business, how do you take it and scale it so it positively affects one billion people? So our goal at Focus at Will is can we help a billion people on the planet focus better? And what does that take? Is it better channel design? Is it doing it not only through streaming music, but maybe it's in virtual reality? Maybe right. it's a couple different ways. That's another thing to talk to the, to the students about is uh, learning team dynamics. So in today's workplace, we don't all show up in an office anymore. And uh, although there's this open office plan, which is a whole nother discussion, there's also working virtual. So how do you set your goals? How do you be really clear about the mission of um, the department? Like the music industry has certain goals that we want to hit every week, every month, we call those sprints. And then how do you communicate on video? Like we'll do Zoom chats. Let me back up. We do Zoom chats where we're all online together every morning for about 10 or 15 minutes, like a huddle. And then we break the huddle. Does everyone know clear about your goals and mission? And then we report through things like Slack and uh, email and communications about how everything's going in the day. And then we set goals for the week. So team dynamics remote are very non-futuristic and very now. And the people who are able to master those skills bring a lot to a company. So I would highly, highly recommend developing goal setting techniques and working remote techniques that help you be a super achiever without having to be in the room with everyone. With that, Dr. Bill, over and out. See y'all.